SFB Addict here. We're going to do a little video on how to make a dock for Linux Mint XFCE. Now I already have a dock on the side of my screen here that I use for a bunch of my programs. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make one for hmm, DOS games. So basically you go to your panel across the bottom and go add new items. And this is how you would add items at the bottom of the screen. But what we want is we actually want to create a new dock. So we want to go to Panel Preferences. And right here is how you add a new panel, as opposed to just adding new items down here on the left. Now if that's all you want to do is just add a few items down here, then simply right-clicking going to panel and adding a new item is all you need to do and it'll put a new icon right down here but we want to make a new panel now you'll notice that you've got some options here where you can lock it you can set it to automatically hide and you can set it to reserve space and reserving space will bounce any of the icons that you have on your desktop out of the way. So let's add a new panel. And as you can see, it just creates the little gray area. You can tell it to span your multiple monitor setup. Show, automatically show and hide, etc. And you can really change the, the row size, make it multiple rows change its length, etc. I'm just going to let it do it automatically. And then you just simply click in here and add your item. Now, on my computer, I have an external hard drive where I've got a folder which I've called Downloads for OS and then I've got a subfolder there for DOS and then I've put in a bunch of DOS games. Now, since these are DOS games, we want to use DOS Box to launch them. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a launcher. Now, if we scroll down here, you'll notice DOS Box isn't an item. But if we just add a launcher, it just sticks it in there. And then you have to configure it. So you right-click on it and go to Properties. Now, in the launcher, it seems like it's empty. You're saying, well, I already added the launcher, didn't I? Mm, no, you've added the button to the bar, which will let you access the launcher. You actually have to add the launcher in here. So we're using DOSBox, and you click in the Edit, and right here is the command. So what we're going to want to do is put in the directory of the program. Now make sure your folders don't have any spaces in the names because if they have spaces in the names and you have to put the, the appropriate types of quotations etc to make sure that it understands it as a, a file name that's got spaces etc it's just easier just to make sure your, your folders don't have a space so you have DOSBox as the command and then the location of the file that you want to run now you cl can click on this little button here and navigate to where it's at or if you already have it written down copy paste it in which is what I'm, I'm going to do here let me go back to the beginning of the line here. So this is an external drive, which is why it has mount. And that's the name of the drive. And then it's my downloads for OS folder, my DOS folder. And the particular game we're going to make it for is Warlords 2 from SSI. And then the executable for the game. 
and you should be careful about whether or not the file is all capitals or not, etc. Make sure you got it spelled correctly. And then click Save. You can click Close. And close again. And close again. As you notice, the menu automatically hid until I move my mouse over it but you really want this at the top of your screen or at the side of the screen so that way when it goes up and you can click on it and up comes the window for DOSBox and run your game. Now this is setting at the default 3000 cycles you can hit control and then F12 to increase your number of cycles to uh, what you want so you can do that manually or you can actually modify the command to set the number of cycles directly as the program launches. But in this case, I'm just going to let it launch and I'll do it manually. If you want to dig out what the commands are for DOSBox to set the number of cycles, etc., you can dig into that on your own. Now you notice that once you've got the dock, you can just simply go in and go add new items. So that's again what we're going to do. We're going to do another launcher. Going to go to the properties. We're again going to add DOSBox. We're again going to go to the properties. Now this time let's navigate instead of copying and pasting. So we have a bunch of games here. Let's do Star Control. Now for Star Control, I do believe it is StarCon.exe. Now because it's DOS, it could also be a batch file. So don't be surprised if you have to select something that says something as simple as uh, StarCon.bat or something like that. And we can change the icons. I can do a whole new video on how to make icons, but uh, Basically you click on the icon and you select the one that you want. Now you can customize these and make your own, etc. Like I said, that's a whole new whole new video. And image files is the, the primary way you're gonna do that. But for now we're just gonna grab any old icon. Doesn't really matter which one. Excuse my random desktop wallpapers there. Now that didn't exactly launch properly, so let's go in and take a quick, uh, quick look at that. Now you notice that we forgot to put the command DOSBox at the front of it. So when you click this little button to navigate to the location, it's going to replace the entire line. And as you saw, when you try and launch it that way, it'll open the DOS box briefly and then it'll close. So make sure your DOS box command is there. and you're into this, the Star Control game.
and you can repeat this process for as many DOS games as you want. But it doesn't just have to be DOS games. You can also put in non-gotten DOS games. So let's do another launcher. This time we're going to do wine. Now I've already run the installation for wine for Alpha Centauri. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put in the location of that. file is called Terran or T-E-R-R -R, something like that. Let's just keep scrolling down till we find it. There we go, Terran.exe. And again because we used the button it took out the wine in front of that. So let's put that command back in. an error. So let's take a look and see why that's not working. And the reason is we've capitalized everything in wine. So let's just do W-I-N-E. Now my screen recorder is probably going to go blank here on the launching of this program. Which indeed it has. Now the better command instead of just wine is actually wine space start space slash unix space percent f. This is actually the command that you'll find in the wine program's loader prompt. And, and this is the more proper way to launch. So if you do have any problems using just simply wine put in the full command. Now because my dual monitor setup here goes blank and resizes the resolution of the screen, the screen recorder is not going to work too well with that, so I'm not going to try and show you the Alpha Century game, but as you can see this is how you can build your dock for XFCE and put anything you want into it. You can do programs. You can do simple commands, like this is the X kill command. This is what kills errant program windows that are, that are frozen. It's sort of like your alt control delete highlight and end task. It's just simply the command X kill percent U as a launcher. You can do things like load up your task manager. Which in this case the program is XFCE4 hyphen task manager. You can use any task manager you want, but again it's just a launcher. But you can put pretty much anything you want on your docks, and you can have more than one dock. So that's it for this video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, there's a, a link here in my uh, description for donations if you uh, feel the uh, need to say thank you with cash. And if you're thinking it's kind of odd that I put that, that link in there to PayPal, well think of it this way. For a YouTube YouTuber to make money from their videos, they have to get about a hundred thousand views that are monetized in order to make 
one hundred dollars. And until they make that one hundred thousand views, they don't actually receive any money. So you got to get the hundred dollars before Google or YouTube will send you a check. And even then, that check's going to have about for Canadians probably about forty percent of that check withheld under the tax treaty for US taxes and then they then have to turn around and apply to get that money back so as you can see small-time youtubers that only get like two or three hundred hits per video are never gonna make money from YouTube it all depends on the subscribers donating through PayPal so that's why every youtuber out there now is suddenly saying please donate through patreon it's because youtube is no longer paying them any money they've lowered the amount of money that they pay for advertising etc etc it's no longer economically viable to make any sort of money for videos through youtube so if you wanna donate some cash i've got a link there from my paypal no need for a patreon because I don't do videos often enough. A one-time donation as a thank you, greatly appreciated. But if you can't afford to do that, don't bother. Just enjoy the vid and have fun. That's all for now.